Let's check in now with our media partners from Voice of OC for an update on what's happening this week in Orange County government and politics. Here to talk about issues in the news right now, we welcome the editor in chief for Voice of OC, Norberto Santana. Hi, Norberto. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Voice of OC recently published a series of exposés highlighting questionable dealings by Santa Ana Mayor Miguel Polito, as well as other current and former council members. This week, we heard that Polito was amending key state required disclosure documents because of your reports. What's the latest? Santa Ana Mayor Miguel Polito has indeed amended his public statements of economic interest to acknowledge ownership of a Westminster house that he and other members of his family purchased from a city contractor for $230,000 less than fair market value. Now, following an, invest an investigative expose published by Voice of OC, Polito listed his interest in the house on amendments to his 2010, 2011, and 2012 filings, known as Form 700s. Now, the amendments show his share of the home amounted to a fair market value of between $10,000 and $100,000. Now, Bob Stern, president of the LA-based Center for Governmental Studies, said the new filings indicate that Polito's co-ownership of the house likely amounted to an illegal gift under the state's Political Reform Act. Now, last month, Voice of OC reported that in 2010, the Polito family traded a vacant lot for the house, which was owned by Rupin James Akubian, president of Napa Orange County Auto Parts. Now, at the time, the property swap, the Orange County Assessor's Office appraised fair market value of the lot at $200,000 and the house at $430,000. But then in 2012, the mayor's family transferred the home solely into his name, and Polito sold the home for $397,000, $197,000 profit. Now, during the two years between those two transactions, Polito voted for two separate contracts for Napa Auto Orange County Parts, including a three-year no-bid contract in 2011, which was worth $1.3 million dollars that made the Santa Ana-based Napa store the city's exclusive auto parts provider. Now, the owner of the auto parts store denies any wrongdoing. And Polito isn't talking to us, but he did tell local blogger Art Pedrosa, who is friendly with the mayor and has worked on his campaigns in the past, that he expected to be quickly cleared by the city attorney, Sonia Carvalho. That has not happened. Instead, Carvalho confirmed to reporters this week that she is investigating the circumstances of the property swap and subsequent city contract. Now, she says a report on the matter to the city council should be ready by its meeting later this month. Since the Polito's bro story broke, we've also reported on a lawsuit that claims Councilwoman Michelle Martinez was involved in campaign money laundering with a developer doing work in the city. And this week, we also published a story detailing that former Councilwoman Claudia Alvarez voted in favor of a proposed apartment complex after the complex developer paid $5,000 for a legal opinion concluding that Alvarez, who's a deputy DA, could run for unprecedented fourth term, according to a developer's expense report that was submitted to the city. Now, Alvarez isn't returning phone calls. Martinez, in turn, told our reporter that she's been maligned by the developer and is threatening lawsuits. In another subject, with the closure of San Onofre's nuclear power station, there's a search underway in the region to establish a new power plant, and it looks like Orange County's Water District Board took a tough vote this week to make Anaheim the site against the wishes of the local Chamber of Commerce and residents. What's going on? Indeed, it was a sharply divided uh, Orange County Water District Board this week that approved the lease of empty land in Anaheim to a company planning to build a power plant despite objections from residents, business leaders that are concerned about its negative impact on health and real estate values. Now, the 400 megawatt power plant would use natural gas to generate energy. The vote was six to four, with those in favor citing potential brownouts because of the recent shutdown of the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station just south of San Clemente. Now, directors voting against the plant said that the site in a commercial area near the Honda Center wasn't an appropriate place for a power plant. Now, they said they were uncomfortable with the approval process for the project, which largely leaves the Anaheim City Council and Planning Commission, local bodies that typically sign off on major land use decisions like this, out of the loop. Now, regarding the question of whether Anaheim will have a chance to weigh in on the project, those in favor of it say that the lease approval is only the beginning of a lengthy process that the plant operator, whose Maryland-based competitive power ventures, must undergo. Now, because of the special treatment that power plants receive under California state law, the California Energy Commission will instead have final say over that project. 
Now, city officials and some residents would like to see the 19-acre site turned into a sports park. The city has indeed offered about $23 million for the land, though some board of directors express skepticism that the offer is genuine. Now, company officials have countered, saying that they would build a sports field on about 10 acres of the property, but the plant would also be enclosed by high walls. Now, the hardened Honda Auto dealership across the street from the plant has long desired to expand into that lot, according to members of the Hardin family who attended the meeting to oppose this project. Now, dealership owner Dennis Hardin told the Voice of OC reporter that while the board was in a closed uh, doors uh, meeting, they hired their former mayor uh, turned lobbyist, Kurt Pringle, to help them stop the power plant project. All right, it appears now that Orange County overwhelmingly leads the state in the deportation of children through the local probation department. And this month, local activists marched on the streets of downtown Santa Ana demanding that county probation officials stop referring minors to federal immigration authorities. What do we know now? Indeed, a new report by UC uh, Irvine law students charges that Orange County's referral policies violate confidentiality laws, they stifle rehabilitation, and undermine public safety. Now, the report reveals that Orange County accounts for about 43% of the state's total referrals of juveniles to ICE, uh, U.S. Uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Now, the report says that the county referred, uh, referred nearly 550 youths to ICE between January 2009 and June of 2012. In many cases, the report noted that parents are not notified that authorities are seeking to deport their children, who can linger in immigration holds for months. Now, activists say that the referrals are really undermining the crucial trust between Latino communities and law enforcement. It creates terror, it creates fear, it creates suffering. A lot of these youth are sent to ICE detention centers indefinitely far away from their families. We want them to stop acting as ICE agents by asking the youth for their immigration status or their origin of birth. Now, going forward, probation officials have agreed to meet with activists to discuss the report. 50 pages is, is remarkable. Our organization, we live and die on how we analyze data and making the right decisions. And so if you're offering data that we can use to make the right decision, that can only be productive. We'll keep you posted on how those discussions go. Now, for more on these stories and other political news throughout Orange County, go to voiceofoc.org. All right. Thank you very much, Norberto.